John, hey, welcome. Man. So, so, Fantastic. Good, good to be good, here, good. man. Good to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be back. Good to be back. Yes, yeah. definitely. There, there's a song, there. Good to be back. I'm on the right track. I don't know if it's a gospel song. <laughs> I've got, I got to test you each time. Though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good to be back. I'm yeah. on the right track or whatever like that, you know. But John, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show. And, thank you. Um, thank you so much. You know, me. Uh, when, when you came on the show the last yes. time, um, you were one of those persons that I chose because you know when you're starting something new you want to make sure you get the right people in the okay place, you know? mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. so I, I selected among the persons that they they wouldn't say no you know a person mm -hmm. that i trust if anything thank you, know? you thank you as you were like um when i first came to this country in 1992 and when i got baptized by your father mm -hmm. um in 1993 or 1995 um, you're like a big brother, you know. Mm, no, thank you, sir. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah. it's always important when you got persons <clears throat> who take care of you and everything like that, you know. But I wanted to catch up with you um, in regards to recent developments. Yes, sir. And be more specifically, um, in December of this last year, um, the 31st at mm -hmm. 7:45, um, there was this major fire, mm. and as of that major fire, it actually made a dent into some of your, your historical mm. um, things. Can you break that down as to what happened? Yeah, sure yeah. thing. Uh, and again, thank you for having me here. And it's yeah. great to be able to share time with you. I'm yeah. really honor what you do. Yes. Um, December 31st, New Year's Eve, everybody's uh, getting ready to party. Mm. And um, for us as Christians, we all start to tra travel to our various churches yes. for what's known as watch night or crossover service, yes, yes. which takes us out of the old year into the new. Yes. And uh, I'm music director at New Testament Church of God, yes. Lambert Road, as you know, and I'm leading worship. And we've had a great worship service. Mm. Uh, I'm encouraging, encouraging the saints that, you know, whatever's happened in 2018, Yes. Let's leave it behind and let's move forward in 2019 with God. You yes. know, Bishop has, uh, we've gone for the service, Bishop has preached, mm. um, laid down a really strong word, turned to me, and even in his sermon, he was sharing with me, even yesterday, a point that he made about me coming up to another level. Yes. And uh, he said, he didn't know why he said it, but he just, God felt, God just directed him to look at me and say those words straight yes. to me, direct to my face. Yes. And I received those words, you know, anytime anybody wants to encourage me, you know, I'm a person that will take that encouragement. Yes, yes. And so we've had the service, the service has gone well, Bishop's preached, and we get to the midnight hour and everything is kicking off and mm. they do the big countdown. We get to one and everybody's happy new year and it's all joy and yes. uh, celebration. But um, after service finished, <clears throat> I'm, I'm driving home, we're dropping a sister home and uh, listening to the radio, yes. LBC, and uh, the traffic report comes up that there's a fire in Croydon at a storage mm. uh, depot. And so I think to myself, oh my days, I hope it's nothing too serious. Yes. You know, New Year's Eve, what a way to start the new year. Yeah. Uh, and so about half an hour later, after we've dropped this person on and started to make our way home, you know, news report comes on again, you know, the fire on the Pearly Way, the A23 mm. is out, is really out of control at the moment. Uh, it's at the Shergard storage. Yeah. My heart sank because that's my storage that yeah. they're talking about now. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my days, what's going on down in Croydon? Uh, Maureen is driving beside me and mm. my wife and yeah. she said, John, maybe it's not that bad. Let me just check out the story. And I'm driving and while I'm driving, she's Googled the story. And she's turned to me and she said, John, it's not good. Mm. 125 firefighters are at Croydon at this present wow. time. And right there, I knew 125 firefighters means that this fire is big. big. Yeah. Uh, all I could think of was Grenfell, mm. when they had hundreds and hundreds of firefighters there. <clears throat> and I um, thought to myself, wow, this is it. I can't, there's not, my gear is gone. You yeah, know? yeah. And so um, I decided I'm going to drive down to the site and see if I can get close to see what's going on. Because mm. as I'm driving, news reports are continually coming in how serious this fire is. They've shut off the Pearly Way mm. uh, half a mile either way, you know, past the building. So when we got close and we was able to walk in, I could see this towering inferno wow. kicking off and my heart completely sank because right there I knew that along with everybody else that had stories there, 
my literal world in business uh, and I'm in music so all of my mm. musical equipment yes all of my memorabilia from IDMC and yes. We Sing You Sing our merchandise CDs mm. and DVDs our t-shirt merchandise for our school work yes. with children equipment that I hire equipment that I give and loan to people yes. when I need it yes. all of that's gone so, 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 so someone is not understanding and your background, mm. um, you have been in the music business for years. Mm, yeah, I'm celebrating about 45 years. 45 years? 45 years in, in gospel music. You, know, you look like 46. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 45 years in, the, in business and mm. of course, many people of course, they store lots of things. Yes sir. You know, because yeah. at the end of the day, um, in England, people, <laughs> the houses, yeah, yeah, <laughs> people use yeah. the garages a lot right, for storage, right, if that's anything. Right, that's right. But, but w w I understand that you, you thought about other persons, but right mm. there and then, what were some of the key things that you're thinking about? There are things maybe popping into your mm. mind, key items. I sprung to mind <clears throat> of what was lost was um, a drum kit given to me by my uncle mm -hmm. in the mid 80s mm -hmm. when he was a drummer at Brixton Church. Uh, and uh, when it was at uh, the Oval, yes, uh, off your road, and this was an old signature 1960s uh, Sona vintage. drum kit, vintage kit, beautiful wow. vintage kit, which I had started to do the restoration on. Um, the next thing I thought about was over eight thousand pounds worth of CD stock wow. that had gone up in smoke. Uh, the next thing I thought about was the PA system that I just bought two months earlier wow. that I put in storage. Mm. And then as I stood there, the list of my equipment was just going, just like, you know, you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it was endless. The list mm. was endless, you know. Um, I started thinking about the old posters and pictures from IDMC, my gospel choir, yeah. our history. Yes. Uh, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Yeah. So posters that we'd got everywhere we've gone around the world, I made it a duty to take a poster of the show that we were in. Mm, mm. And so thinking that one day I'd have my own office, full on office, yeah. and I could have all of these posters up on the of showing of IDMC's yeah. history and all the work that we've done. So, you know, all of this stuff now is starting to register in my head that it's gone. Yeah. You know, my history that was there has now mm. that I've been able to put together over many years is gone. So right there, I had to speak to myself, well, it's all about the new beginning. Yes. Because I don't have nothing to build on. Yes. You know, so yes. this is, it's literally a brand new beginning that has to start from January the 1st. And what, what would you say was your estimated uh, value of? Uh, I estimated the replacement value of all of my equipment to be uh, between uh, 35 or mm. 40,000 pounds. But at the same time, you will not be able to get that drum back. Exactly. You, you know, never get back those, those posters. Those posters. And yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's gone. Yeah. Um, it's funny enough, I was looking through my phone and I saw pictures of the posters that I took. I took pictures of the posters yeah. a little while ago. Mm. Um, but those memorabilia have gone. But, the, you know, the drum kit will never be replaced. Mm. Mm. Uh, some of that equipment that I really valued will not be replaced. Mm. But it's equipment. Yes. You know, it, it, I was only in that building two days earlier, yes. putting everything in. So, you know, it could have been a different thing. Um, it could have been me burnt up in that building, yeah. you know. I, I, I've been following it a bit and I've seen like the Member of Parliament down there and I've seen on the news as well where they had the one of the representatives, mm -hmm. I don't know if he's the owner or so, and it was like, uh, there was, in a way it was like they were sort of washing their hands mm -hmm in a way of it and the MP was trying to pull him to task and a couple other persons yes. who were affected were also a bit very disgruntled because of the insurance doesn't That's seem right. to be carrying right. much. Where That's is it right. at now? Well, how I understand it, because yeah. um, I met, we, I'm in a Facebook group and yes. a, a group with a lot of those people and those people mm -hmm. that was represented, yes. they kind of represented a group in, at large. One of yes. the gentlemen, uh, he had a business in there, he stored his equipment, he had over a hundred and fifty thousand pounds worth of stock yeah. in that bit in the in the storage. He had about four units, four yeah. big units in there. Yeah. Um, and in regards to insurance, uh, Shergard are only paying out what you insured your room t 
at at that time at that time right. so for argument's sake um if you took out the room and you took their basic insurance you are only obliged and let me make that clear you are only obliged mm -hmm. to receive up to two thousand pounds insurance because that's what you insured your room for right um the problem being is that that gentleman that you saw there, mm. he took the highest level of insurance, mm. which only worked out to like 14,000 pounds, mm. 40,500. So he was still out of pocket yes. by a mar large yeah. margin. I believe if I'm correct, he took out some additionals. So he still was covered to a degree, but still mm. he was out of pocket. But I think the problem that everybody had, Sil, mm. was the fact that the business, as we saw, was not fit for purpose. Which is sure God. Which is sure God. Yes, yes. Simply because in this day and age, um, there was no sprinkler system in mm. the building. There was no uh, fire retardant doors blocking off sections yeah, yeah, of yeah, the building. Yeah, yeah. Every one of the units had a three to four foot gap between the top of the unit and the ceiling. So there was no ceiling uh, the room so that any <coughs> fire couldn't go over into the next unit. Yes, yes. And the fact of the matter is that we just didn't know what was being stored. So where I'd have equipment, you had other people having furniture. Yes. You have other people having clothing. Yes. You have people have paperwork. Yes. Uh, I've seen, been, I've driven up there a few times, I've seen companies, uh, tyre companies, having car tyres, mm. rubber in there. There's many a time I've driven up to load my stuff in my room and I've seen off licenses storing wow. liquor and alcohol wow. and beer, which is basically, this building was a bomb waiting to go right. off, so that's literally. A, so therefore, there was no sort of check and balances. There's no check and balances. Mm. People can store what they want there. And so, although in every lift and every corridor, they said, do not store any of these items, yeah. you know, when you broke it down, what those items were, and equated it to maybe what was in those rooms, yeah. you f you'd see that they were directly flaunting the, the rules yeah. of the building. So, but there's no checks and balances. Yes, yes. So you just don't know, you know. So it's put everybody who's who was there who had the room mm. in a very tricky situation. In that now, um, because Shogal have been given the all clear. Um, they don't seem to want to now have to respond or have to answer to the requests of so many people. Yes. I mean, this is a this is a purpose-built building. Yes, yes, it wasn't yes. like it was a, a refurb mm. that had old structures, so they couldn't put the the um, they couldn't retrofit mm. sprinklers or anything. Like this is a new new building, which is only maybe six, seven years old. So, it, so yeah. it seems like uh, Sure God is now actually going to be saying that because some of the people were actually bringing in items which somewhat maybe even nullify their insurance as well at the same time, which is maybe a contributory cause to this. Um, Quite possibly, yeah. but as I said, because there's no checks and balances, yes. there was no itemizing of the room. Yes. You know, specific itemizing. Yes. They would never know who had what mm. in there. So I could say whatever. Mm. You know, I've got things for my business. Because I've seen a lot of persons, um, um, I think, is it, is it Tony Harrison or Tony mm. Smith? Tony Harrison. Tony Harrison, right? I think he's been affected. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I was going through your thread, a few other people said, oh my God, I got stuff there. Mm. I got stuff there. People are always saying they got mm. stuff there. Mm. So w what is the, the group of, what is action? I'm going to think of class action. Mm -hmm. what, is, what are you guys actually doing now? The last communication we had, um, we, we was able to meet with MP, yes. as you said, and he was very concerned about the working model that Shergard had, mm -hmm. and he brought it up in the Commons, and they had a big debate around that as well. Um, the group, on a whole, were looking to see if they could come together and see if they could really um, take Shergard to task, yes, and yes. find out if they could, if they had grounds to sue. Yes. Because um, although Shergard in their communication said, well, on our website it actually said that you should not store personal possessions and you shouldn't store 
personal valuables yeah. and items, things like mm -hmm. that. On another communication, it said in their promotional blurb, our venue, our building is the safest place for you mm. to store personal items and mm. uh, things of value, personal yes. value. So they contra contradicted themselves. Except at the same time, yes. um, from what I understand, uh, they've actually taken down that side of the site. Yes. So people can't see that information anymore. But a lot of the people in the group who are smart and who are wise yeah. to it actually took screenshots mm. and stuff. So they've got the proof to say that all of these things were said. So if you've got a working model that's not fit for purpose yes. and you've got a building that, uh, although it's been signed off to, to function, mm. but have no fire um, retardant yes. uh, support, how can that be right? Yes. You know, so you've, we've got the team and they've been looking, there's people that are working pro bono on behalf of the team. Yes. There's some emails going back and forth that we're all contributing to and trying yeah. to support. And so, you know, thank you for allowing me to speak. Yes, and one yeah. of the things that we've all said mm -hmm. uh, from the head of the team uh, or the team in general that we should just try and keep talking about keep this. Talk yes, because yes. if we don't, then it's just going to be put down and down and down mm -hmm. and washed away. But we're just trying to keep it in the public yeah. eye to let them know that, you know, these are multi million, billion pound companies. And I, and I presume Shergard have companies all over yes, the UK yes, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So w what is it that people can do then, um, you know, the public? Um, I think it's just continuing to make awareness of it. Mm. You know, we're just trying our best to use our voice, um, uh, use our profile. You know, I've got a certain amount of profile, which I'm blessed to have yes. as a gospel artist, uh, quite high in my field. So I'm using that profile as yes. one of the uh, people that suffered through the loss mm. uh, to say, look, this is not right. Uh, you guys need to come good. Yes. It's not that you're broke. You've yeah. got a bit of money behind you. Yes. You know, look after your people. And, you and, and, and therefore, people can now somewhat uh, contribute to different GoFundMe mm. that persons of all. Are, are these different GoFundMe? I mean, I, I know you've got one up there, but are these on like... Put it this way, are they linked together? Like persons can... Uh, no, well, they're them. not. I mean, yeah. everybody's done doing their they own thing. They're doing differently, yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen a few, and I've contributed to a few of them. Yes. yes. You know, because some of the stories are truly heart-rendering. Yes, I, I've been, yeah. When you hear that people <clears throat> like Tony Harrison, he put his in the storage, mm. and he encouraged his daughter to put hers in, in yeah. the same storage building. Um, but she had only put it in just for a couple of weeks while she moved to a new building new yeah. house uh, and I think it was only a week into into the new year she had planned to move everything back out but obviously the fire came and so wiped, her out, wiped her out you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. Uh, quite a few people had exactly the same story you talked about people on my feed saying that I had stuff in. Yeah. there was a lady that my sister uh, commented about it on her Facebook page yeah. and she is a, a deputy head teacher who moved out to Qatar yeah and she saw my sister's page and said, what's going on at, at Shoregard Storage? Yeah. You know, she said, oh, my brother, he lost everything, the big fire. That's when she found out that her, her stuff, stuff, she's way in Qatar. Yeah, because a know. lot of people have gone overseas to maybe work, working for that's years, right. Yes. And what she had done, she had left in August, started a new job. The husband and the child sorted out the house, put it up to rent, I believe, yes. put all their stuff into storage to hold safely, like the website said, yes. you know what I mean? Put your personal possessions here, safe mm. to store, and moved out to Qatar, living yes. a fantastic life, yes. working hard, only to find out via Facebook, via somebody else's feed, yes. that all of their worldly possessions have gone up in smoke. Wow, you know? wow, wow. So it's very hard. Very yes. Hard. So before we move on, um, John, how can people get hold of the GoFundMe page? Um, if they type in Shergard Fire yeah. or John Fisher... Yeah. Uh, They're not going to contribute to Shergard, is it? No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, just, a, it's just a link. So um, if they type in John Fisher, yes. uh, Shergard yeah. Fire yeah. fundraising, yeah. they'll see my name, they'll see my profile. If yeah. they go to my uh, yeah. Facebook page, um, they will find a link yeah. there as well. Yeah. And uh, we've had a lot of people just be really yeah. generous yeah. And, yeah. And, yes. and donate. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I spoke to John about this and, um, and I encourage John to, to really go for it, you know, because at the end of the day, I believe that we give sometimes to things which are sometimes insignificant. But then at the same time, when I say insignificant, that's a bit very funny because 
everything is subjective. What is insignificant for me is very subjective and significant for someone else. But I strongly believe that we have a responsibility as a people to support each other at circumstance because uh, we never know what may happen in each of our lives, you know. So I want to encourage everybody to really support John Fisher, support the work that he's doing, support others like Tony Harrison there. I'm sure if you Google you're going to find a lot of persons who have been in a situation like this. That means that it could be me, it could be you, it could be anyone, but I'm sure that we can all each help each other. But John, your pastor said something to you in your beginning, mm. you know. What is the deep message this is actually sending to you? Is there a deep message? Um, I tell you what, we had a massive fundraiser celebration concert uh, just last night. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm privileged to be a part of the gospel music community yes. in this country. And the gospel community <coughs> came out in force yes. to ce celebrate me and support me. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple of friends said, we're going to do this for you, John. We're going to bring this concert on. We're going to bring everybody together. We're going to sing. Yeah. We're going to give God thanks first. Yeah. And then we're going to support you. And one of the words that came out was that God needed to do this, John. You've built what you've done on your own, um, by yourself. Mm. You've put your money into everything that you've done. It's been built by you. Mm. But God needed to clear the ground because he's ready to take you to a higher level. Next level. Yeah. But this higher level has to be seen that it's not going to be your hands that's does it. Mm. It's not going to be made by man. Mm. It's going to be done by God. Mm. But he had to clear the past. Now, people will debate about that. Yes, so, well, yes. you know, how can you, you know, have your only profession, possessions burnt and, mm. and destroyed and then it's, how can this be God? Well, you know, the... the the analogy I'd give, I knew for myself, mm. and was brought again yesterday, was the analogy of Job. I was just thinking about that, yes. Where uh, there was a season where the devil was going to and fro mm. to say, you know what I mean, God, you got all these people, yes. I bet you, if you took away your hand, you will not serve you. They will not serve you, yeah. they'll actually turn around and cuss. Mm. Um, and he says, well, have you considered my servant Job? Mm. You know, Job was a millionaire, he was well-to-do, he was nice, he had a great family. Mm. But bit by bit, his whole world was torn away from mm. him. And um, to the point where he shaved his head clean. Mm. And he says, naked I came into this world. Naked, you know, naked I'll go. Mm. But you know what, well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm. You know what I mean? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Yeah. You know, and I, I wouldn't say I'm, I ain't no Job figure. Well, you shaving? You know, maybe I've got a shaving. You know, but um, if this is the way that yes. God feels that He wants to use me mm. to be able to help others, if, if this is the way that He's going to elevate me, mm. that I've come, uh, that I can, and the analogy of the phoenix rising from the ashes yes, is something yes. that's been thrown at me as well. Mm. And I'm, re I'm receiving a lot of these words, and I'm having to sit down and qualify some of them and pray over them. Yes. But uh, if this is the way that I start my year from scratch, yes. just putting God first in everything, as, as I've been doing, yes. um, but it, on another level yes. this year, then, hey, that's the way it's going to run. Wow. That, that, that's really powerful. That's really powerful, John, because at the same time, that's a testimony. And they say through the, the test, they mm -hmm. give a testimony. Mm -hmm. And through the mess, mm -hmm. they, they bring that message. message. Yeah. And of course, you know, God is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. And of course, he lift up kings, mm -hmm. he remove kings as well. And um, I'm a strong believer in that. But what, are, what is on the agenda? Because I don't think anything has really stopped. Your agenda is still maintained. Mm, yeah, it's, <laughs> what, what's on the agenda? It's, it's yeah. got to keep moving. Yeah. You know, um, I'm still breathing. Yes. I'm still here. Yes. I've still got my right mind. Yes. I've still got the focus. I've still got the vision that I believe God yeah. has given me. Um, my choir celebrates its 25th anniversary this year. Yes. And so with that in mind, 26th of February is IDMC Day where we released, uh, we will release two singles. 26th of February this year. 26th of February yeah. uh, is the 25th anniversary mm. birthday of IDMC. Yes, yes. And so we released two singles on that day. Mm. Uh, we will be in the West End uh, doing some singing 
mm. uh, various locations from Piccadilly to Leicester Square, to yes. Bradley Square, Covent Garden. Yes. Uh, we relaunch our website. Uh, we start to put some dates in the calendar. Yes. Uh, the 8th of March, we do the, the first official birthday party mm. uh, down at the Hideaway. In okay. Stratton, yes, um, yes. Where we bring. You always go there. I always we, keep yeah, seeing that. Yeah, I know. We keep going there. I know. It's our, it's, it is our regular uh, something venue. Something yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we bring back a, a few of the old members to yes. do a reunion, a mini reunion. And we will. We've been blessed to, to record ten yes. al nine albums to date. Yes. And so we'll be going on a musical journey, taking the audience from mm. the first project in 1994 yes. all the way up to the present time to the brand new album songs yes. that we're releasing. So, yes. And through the year, we've got plenty of events that we want to do, mm. projects that I'd like to try and do, Yes, not only for IDMC's own prof uh, profile, but to be able to give back to the community. Yes. That's something that I really believe in. Because you do a lot of stuff with the youth. With the youth and the especially schools. Yeah. In Croydon, you have special, in Croydon, you've got a special That's youth right. thing which you do. That's uh, right, the well. Weasing yeah. Using Project, yes. which is in its 12th year yes. of IDMC giving back, bringing gospel music to schools yes. and providing a concert venue with yes. a professional band, professional lighting, sound, production, so these yes. kids can shine at the yes. highest possible level. Wow. Shine, Jesus, shine. Mm. Well, listen, John, that, that was powerful. I could go on further, you know what I mean? Um, but I wanted to ask you one thing before you go, and um, I, I'm, I'm switching slightly off target because it is something which is all topical. Sure. Um, what's your quick thoughts on the recent deportation um, or the whole issue of deportation to Jamaica by the UK after the Windrush factor? Uh, what's your thought? You have to go into it. I'm, there, I'm yes. very disappointed yes. in it. Uh, we have we have radical uh, Islamists who are preaching hate on our streets yes. that they can't deport. Mm. We have uh, fighters who are coming over who will um, eat of our food. Mm enjoy our uh, benefits, yes. but hate the structure of England mm. um, and hate what we believe in and stand against the, the government, the Queen uh, and us as human beings and try to kill us yes. on our streets. Yes. We can't deport them. Yes. But yet we have people who have sown into this country yes. for years, 70 years, 50 mm. years, 40 years. Um, and but because of some clerical yeah. error, clerical situation, whatever you want to call it, mm. they're ready to send them back to a country that they left so many years ago. Mm. They left, those, these Windrush generation people left Jamaica uh, on the invitation. Yes. And let's get that right. Yes. You know I mean? They left Jamaica, their motherland, on the invitation of the UK to come and help rebuild this country after the world wars. Yes. Yeah. And so they did that. Many of them had intentions of coming over just for maybe five years yes. to do some work, earn a bit of money, yes. go back home and support themselves. Yes. But they, they made a life for themselves over yes. here. And they done some of the worst jobs. Mm. Let's not get it twisted. You know, they've done some of the jobs that the, the indigenous population didn't want to do. That's cornets, the, yes. Bu the bus driving, the sweeping the streets, working in the health services and the nurses and Billing these guys, they, they yes. didn't want to do it. Mm. So they stuck to it and made a decent life for themselves. Yes. And for them to be sent back um, under this kind of guise is really terrible. Mm. I mean, you know, like you, we, mm. we listen to your yeah, LBCs and different stations. Yes. And I was heartened when I heard a discussion and listened to the way Nick Ferrari yes. had, had, had um, presented the case. Yeah, he broke it down. You know, he, he broke, broke it, it down very, powerful, very yes. neatly, yes, you yes, know, yes. that these people who had worked their lives, mm. paid their taxes. You know, it's not like they're living off the... Because, you know, as black people, mm. we're very proud people. Yes, yes, yes. So if we don't need to take the government money for benefit, we won't do it. Yeah. It's just changed, you know, the cycle has changed now yes, with yes. the younger generation. But as the older generation, they're very proud. Yes. And they want to know that they can work for their money, um, when they came over in the early days, they all lived in one house and saved until Believe they could buy their yes. own property. Yes. When they got their own property, they looked after it, and then they looked after their own children and mm. helped them to get on the, the ladder, yes. like my parents done for me. Yes. So to have them treated in this way, 
for me is absolutely terrible. Yeah. Total shame. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I got that in. I just wanted to get that um, perspective mm -hmm. in because it is something which is a um, topical issue, mm -hmm. but it's something which is really um, touching a lot of people's lives. And it's something that I keep following up on. I follow up a lot on the whole Brexit thing from it. I won't touch into that. Mm. But I want to keep a, a spotlight on the whole deportation thing and the immigration mm. thing as well. You know, um, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for having John um, Fisher today. John Fisher, and a legend, you know, moving from glory to glory to glory. Um, the incident which has happened in the wee hours or the starting of 2019, may seen as a stain and as a, a negative. But what we're seeing is that sometimes things which are meant for bad or for evil can turn out for good. And as a spiritual person, which is John, what you have seen uh, and what his pastor said is new beginnings. And people, that's hard to fathom sometimes when persons have worked for years and build and build and build and keep their artifacts and keep the things that means a lot to them and somehow to lose it all. But there's always a saying, once there's life, there's hope, you know? And is it who against hope? There's a scripture, believe in hope. So I have great confidence in God, in, in, in God, yes, for John and what John is saying and what God is going to do in his life. But also at the same time, there's something that we can do. We can actually support the GoFundMe for John. You'll see the details below. And also for other persons, there's Tony Harris and lots of other persons who have been affected. We have to be our, uh, what should I say, a neighbor. Is a, there, I always sing all, all the while with, um, what's it called, um, John? It's um, Sesame Street. Who are the people in your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. They are the people that you meet each day. And the good Samaritan, so who's a Samaritan? That's a man on the street there. So we all have to support each other. And that is why I invited John to share his story and so we can support him as well. John, listen, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you so me. much. Bless you, man. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure. Absolute thank pleasure. You. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the Silver and Studios show. And uh, remember to like and subscribe to the show. And um, of course, you can go to the website. You can find more details about John as well. And to like, subscribe, and share. And remember, share. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Silver and Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.